Hey guys, so today I have swatches of the China Glaze Hello Sugar Collection. This is their spring 2023 collection. So there are six polishes here all together. These came from beyondpolish.com, so I will link that website down below where you guys can check those out. I also have an affiliate code with Beyond Polish, which I will have up here and in the description box six polishes all together and we'll get into the swatches. So the first polish is called Holy Sugar and China Glaze just describes this as bright and buttery. So these polishes all seem to be really sensitive to oils on my nails. So I went through the same process that I always go through every time that I swatch and you can see there were still little separations happening from oil on my nails. So I don't know why these were so sensitive to it. I've only seen that one other time and I think it was also with the China Glaze collection. So I don't know, but that was happening here. But that's also a very like swatching specific problem because I'm always trying to keep oil on the skin around my nails, but then get it off of my nails. So I don't think anyone else will really run into that. This was a little bit streaky, but it's a pastel yellow. So overall it actually had pretty good coverage and opacity for what it is. I did float that brush on the second coat and I'd say that it covered pretty well for two. I wouldn't be surprised if you needed three though. So that is two coats of Holy Sugar. The next polish is called Here for the Candy, and this is just described as a bubblegum pink. This also had decent formula and coverage. This is a little streaky. They kind of have that chalky finish that I haven't seen in a really long time where they're both streaky and opaque at the same time, and they take a little bit more like getting used to to work with. So if you're not floating your brush or if you're overworking the polish, you can get some pretty gnarly streaks because the contrast between the streak and the opacity of the polish will be a lot. I don't mind formulas like this, as long as you can get used to floating the brush, it turns out great in the end anyway, and this one levels out really nicely, which is something that the older, like, chalky finish polishes did not do. And this covered pretty well for me in two coats. So that is two coats of Here for the Candy. The next polish is called Gimme Sugar, and China Glaze describes this as a creamy cantaloupe. This is not showing true to color at all. It is much brighter and more neon in person. So this is the same formula as the last couple of polishes. They take a little bit of getting used to, but once you get that brush floating down, they can go on pretty well and are much preferable to a more sheer, streaky pastel polish. Pastels are a pain in the butt anyway. Now both this color and the last color had white streaks of pigment that came out of the bottle. They blended in pretty well, like you just saw it on one swipe and then within the next swipe it was gone, but I did note it across almost this entire collection. This covered pretty well for me in two coats. If you're brand new to this kind of formula, you might end up needing three, but I don't think it's super likely. So that is two coats of Gimme Sugar. The next polish is called Kid in a Candy Store, and this is described as a pink coral. This color is also a bit more neon and is showing kind of washed out on camera. This is a little bit of a darker color, so this covered better in one coat than the other polishes have. You can see that little oil bubble there. Again, I think that's a swatching specific issue, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Another thing about this kind of pastel formula versus a more sheer pastel is that while they both have streaks, the more sheer ones tend to, the streaks tend to be worse Worse after the polish is fully dry, where with this kind of formula, they kind of stay the same. So what you see is what you get even after it dries, they're not going to be worse. So that is a nice solid two coats of Kid in a Candy Store. The next polish is called Sweeta Then Sugar, and this is described as a tangerine tinted polish. And this is another one that is showing pretty washed out. It is a lot more neon in person. This is also a little bit of a darker, less pastel color, a little bit more neon. So it does cover a bit better like the last polish did. It also had those white pigment streaks in it, which I did notice in all of the polishes except for the yellow and the next one. It might have been in the yellow, but it was just such a light color that I didn't notice it. And like the other polishes, this leveled itself out really nicely. So it was nice and even after two coats. So that is two coats of Sweeta Then Sugar. I hate that I have to say that out loud. And the last polish is called Sugar Junkie, and this is described as a funky fuchsia with hot pink undertones. Formula-wise, this feels like it came out of a completely different collection. So it was a little bit more jelly, and it applied super even, no streaks, slightly sheer because of that more jelly finish, but very, very even. Very easy application on this one. You didn't have to do any like tricks or techniques like the brush floating like you had to with the other polishes, just a really good solid two coater. So that is two coats of Sugar Junkie. Two favorites. I think all day today I've had two favorites. So I really like Kid in a Candy Store. This is like the perfect Barbie, like bubblegum kind of pink. 
The formula for these was like weird because one minute I would be like, wow, these are really good because they cover really well. And then the other minute I'd be like, okay, these are actually, they take a little bit of finessing. You really have to float the brush with them. There's some kind of in between. I think some people are really gonna like them and some people really aren't. And I kind of went back and forth throughout my swatches of these. But overall, I don't think they're super hard to work with, but you do have to really float the brush. There's a little bit of finesse. I also will say though, I think on a lot of these lighter shades that having a formula that you can cover completely without a lot of nail line and a lot of unevenness is kind of worth the finessing. Um, so Kid in the Candy Store, really like this one. And I also really, really liked Holy Sugar. Now, I earlier today, and I think it's already, probably already been posted by now because I don't know what order I'm going to do this in, but I talked about the Your Sensational from the Essie Spring 2023 collection. I said that I wish this was just a little bit brighter, a little more baby chick, a little less dingy looking. So Holy Sugar is, it is what I wanted out of this yellow Essie. It doesn't have that dinginess to it. It's a nice clean, bright pastel yellow, and like look at the two next to each other. Really liked that one as well. Overall, my only big, really big complaint about this collection was just the color range. <laughs> um, this feels, this yellow feels really out of place. It almost would have made more sense to me if they had done just another pink or coral kind of shade here, or even a, a purple, to kind of like make it kind of like a one color collection. I think if they're gonna throw this yellow in, they probably could have thrown in a blue or a green as well. Not a huge fan of the color range and like even though I really like the yellow it does feel like kind of weirdly out of place. So that is the China Glaze Hello Sugar Spring 2023 collection. Again those came from beyondpolish.com so I will link that website down below. I also have a coupon slash affiliate code with Beyond Polish which will be up here and in the description box. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will talk to you later. Bye!